Hello everyone! Welcome to Handmade Hero, show where we code a complete game live on stream. We are in the middle of our Confuslop series. Uh, very, very many streams this end of this month and beginning of next month. We have done all the work to edit attachment points. We, I want to say, are pretty much ready to start going in and getting all our art assets uh, lined up, placed, and so on. So today on the stream, we want to do is start that process. Here are the things that we've got to do. Number one, we've got to actually start respecting these alignment points. We can edit them now. We don't use them, right? So we got to go into the code, the entity code. Now that we have all this information about how stuff is going to be aligned, we need to actually use it, right? So implement that, uh, and that's going to require some thought because now we've, we've got stuff we didn't have before, right? We now have this, this idea uh, of these pieces that can snap together, and we, we more or less have an entire kind of skeletal system almost. Like we can uh, snap bitmaps together kind of arbitrarily, and we can define new ways that they snap together too. We don't need a lot of that for what we're doing, um, but it does mean we kind of have to think a little about it. Like, how do we want to do that? Okay, we got like bodies and heads, so at least we know we want those points. Uh, what does that look like inside the entity startup code and so on, right? So we, we want to go do that. So that's what we're going to start on today because in order to even see that things are working and that our editor actually does what we think it does, we, we're going to need that. Number two, we want to then start saving those once we can see that they're doing what we want and we can actually build the snap together pieces the way that we want them built. Uh, we want to take that and be able to save it and load it from a intermediate representation that we can use as a permanent storage format. So uh, just a text file, we kind of talked about this, like it's a simple uh, text file format. So that way we can save this along with uh, our actual input PNGs so that we have a definitive reference of like, here's what you import to rebuild the HHAs from scratch, right? So we wanna do those two things. And then finally, what we'd like to do is implement that save button so that when you hit the save button in the editor, it updates your HHAs automatically and saves the C, uh, the, the C style like text thing uh, that that puts that data into the HHA uh, that, that, that you know that you use as the source file format. So we got a bunch of stuff to do uh, over the next week and that's what we'd like to get to because once we've gotten to that point we should have all the stuff in the game right then we we should have all the different characters can be sitting around or hopping around we can place them in there, we can uh, start working, we can start looking at uh, adding a ground cover system if we want to, because now we have the ability to like place alignment points on all of the like little grasses and things. Um, so, you know, if you want to think of this in terms of a tech tree, getting this feature done unlocks a whole set of things we can do to decorate our world, which is really what we want to be doing, uh, is, is having the freedom to decorate our world however we want to. And right now, we did the work to load in all our art assets, but we've just been stymied by the fact that we can't mark them up. Well, now we're going to have a lot of opportunities to mark them up. And in addition to having the opportunities to mark them up, we will also uh, be able to use the editor code we write to add anything else we want. Because that editor code is very generic. We could add any kind of editor there that we wanted. I don't know of anything offhand like I... I'm not anticipating that we need to use it for a lot more stuff because it is a procedurally generated game. So it's not a lot of like editing of actual uh, levels or anything, right? Um, so I don't know that we're gonna need to lean on it much, but I did show you how to write an easy, quick, generic UI system and we used it. And so now anything that we wanna edit, we can. And so if we come across something where we're like, we'd like to be able to edit this, uh, aspect of our inputs that will just work uh, because we can slap it together really simply right uh, so that's where we're at it's a good time to be handmade heroing I think because we've got a lot of possibilities on the horizon that's where you want to be uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what I mean when I say that we've got the editor going uh, but we don't use it and we'll see what we need to do to start 
using it. So if I run the game as it stands right now, uh, one of the things you can see here, and you know, another thing we might want to do today, I mentioned this a couple times, is I want these things to snap automatically, like our debug uh, stuff that we have here needs so it could could stand a little cleanup. Uh, but what we have the ability to do now, right, is we can select uh, anything in the world that we want to look at, right? <clears throat> Uh, and when we select things in the world, what we can then do is we, we have a, a bunch of editor types of things we could throw in here. Right now, there's only one thing we edit, which is alignment points. Uh, we can get a list of those alignment points here, uh, and we can then uh, manipulate them however we want. So, for example, I can uh, set this information and so on. Now, this information isn't really being used, although to a certain extent, you could argue that it is. So if I go click on this, for example, um, I think that if we edited some of these things, maybe they would get used. I don't know. Maybe they're not getting used at all. I, I really couldn't tell you. Uh, looks like maybe not. I'm not sure. So I feel like the default one maybe would get used. I don't know. Let's, let, me, let me look in there and see. Not sure which one we're selecting at the moment. Yeah, I don't see any movement on it, so maybe we're not actually using one of those. Let me, let me uh, go look at one that's more specific. Uh, and let me see. So here we're looking specifically at the cat, right? It's kind of ridiculous, all these weird things we've got hopping around here. Um, so if I'm looking at this cat specifically, uh, which is, let's see, this right here. So it doesn't look like that's even getting used, e even as the initial alignment point. Now, I'm not sure why that is, because I thought we were still using just the initial alignment point but nothing in here is actually responding as far as I can tell. And so one of two things is true. Either we're not using it, I don't think that's probably true. We probably are using it. Or it actually gets mirrored out. And I think it's probably the latter that's happening. I think it kind of gets mirrored out, right? So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to go in there and actually get all of this stuff hooked up properly. First of all, we probably don't want to mirror it anymore. Uh, and second of all, we probably want to start looking at ways of, um, uh, well, there's a couple of different things we want to do. In fact, this is a good example of, of why I was saying we might need the editor to add some things. Uh, when we select here, you'll notice it becomes pretty hard to select these two things separately. Um, and like I select something and I'm just getting a particular bitmap index, but it's hard. I can't really pick from multiple of them, right? So another thing we might want to do is have a list of what the bitmaps were uh, that you had clicked on so that you could be more specific about which one you were editing because there's two of them, right? Uh, and so that's another feature we probably have to add uh, to the editor. And again, I think we've set ourselves up to do that well by making the editor uh, UI stuff really generic. We should be able to throw that together in no time, right? So a lot of stuff there. That's what we want to attack now, get these things actually working. Uh, that will also allow us, hopefully, to um, uh, import a bunch of other things into the game so that it can be more populous, right? Okay, so let's take a look at how these things are actually uh, being used right now. So inside the, our file formats, we've got the align points. Here's how they're defined. We've got a struct align point. It has... Uh, some members in it that allow us to say a percentage alignment feature, uh, a size for the thing, a, like a scaling value, and the type, type being defined in one of these things. What is it aligning? For example, top of head, base of neck, uh, or just default to world, um, things like that. We want the ability to use these things. They're not being used at the moment. Um, and I think, and, and I shouldn't say not being used. You can see that they weren't being uh, used as we edited them. I think the reason for that is that our current way of using these align points is fairly anemic. I think what happens uh, in the asset system is when that gets loaded up, so when we actually go to bring something in, what happens is this loaded bitmap structure here, right? Um, you can see that it, it kind of it mirrors a lot of the stuff, you know, this, this thing. So we end up with stuff like the width over the height, the width and the height, the align percentage, right? That the, the data that was in the bitmap gets lofted up into here and is generally incorrect, right? Because if we go back and edit uh, some of this stuff, this becomes wrong. You know what I'm saying? And so what we probably want to start doing is not 
using this loaded bitmap as that, you know, we want to just use the data directly. So I think that will probably simplify things for us quite a bit. Now, if I go look at where this sort of stuff happens, uh, you can see in here that we, we have some uh, use of it in the asset system. Uh, this is a dip, that's, that's our render a test code and here's the asset builder, so that doesn't matter. Um, if we look in here, that's all if zeroed out code, right? That's not relevant. Uh, and so we come down here, we finally get some information uh, where we're actually using it. It's pretty straightforward stuff, right? So just looking, looking at a lot of this stuff, I don't think we really need most of what's in there. So I think what we want to do is we want to look at now pairing that back and having people actually reach in uh, and get that stuff from the assets a little bit more. Uh, I think that's probably more what we would want, right? Uh, okay, so let's take a look at what we want to do there. Let's start by seeing what we can do for some of this stuff. If we got rid of the pitch, who would complain, right? Like who's going to get uh, upset about that? Uh, looking here, we've got uh, the bitmap pitch gets put in there, right? Um, it looks like we create the pitch when we do make empty bitmap. I'm not sure anyone actually calls that. Who cares about it? Um, let's see here. We've got make sphere normal map we're not using anymore, right? Um, so some of this stuff is just old, right? Sphere diffuse map. So I think these are not and pyramidal, right? So these are these are not real things. We're not using them anymore. Uh, let me look at make empty bitmap and see if anyone's using that. No one is. Uh, so I'm just going to get rid of these because these are just old residual code we don't need anymore. Uh, if I go ahead and uh, recompile, uh, we should now be at a place where nobody cares about the pitch at all. And so we've successfully got rid of one of those members. And let's keep trying to pare that down uh, some more. So in terms of who uses the width and height or the width over height or the align percentage, uh, again, these are things that we could get by reaching back into the asset. The void memory part here, again, a lot of this stuff, I, it's, remember, we wrote our render originally to be a software render. We moved to 3D, so now we've got kind of um, too much. We, we support a lot in here because it, it was spanning different kinds of systems. We've now got the idea of textures, which means that even in the software renderer, the software render would now be the thing that's, that's keeping that texture memory around. So really this stuff uh, as it stands needs to be changed fairly radically, right? And we want to start limiting this stuff. Let's see who's doing what with memory because I'm not sure. Uh, I'm just going to look through here. So you can see that the way that it works is it uses that as sort of temporary storage, uh, if you will, right, to, to, load that, uh, to load that stuff in here. Uh, rather than just loading it into the texture and being done with it. I'm going to let that stand for now, um, but now that I know that that's true, I'm going to put to do on here, it's like, uh, really, we only need uh, texture buffers now. Uh, because we can really update this system uh, to basically use just transfer buffers that we use to shuttle things to the card. And we probably don't need backing store anymore like this. Uh, that's probably just irrelevant for our purposes. Uh, so let's keep going. Uh, when we've got this width over height and width and height, I want to see who's using I just want to learn everyone who's using this stuff so I can have a, a better handle uh, on how that's working. Uh, so let's see uh, what we've got here. You can see here when we create the texture handle, uh, we would have had the information here. So it's really not that necessary the way that it's working there. So we probably can get rid of that uh, as well. Let's take a look width uh, and height there. Um, uh, that actually can come off of the texture handle now, right? So bitmap texture handle would actually have that information in it. So the texture handle uh, bakes that in. And, and so again, it's really duplicate information. I'm going to go ahead and see to what extent I can really push that. Like if I was to get rid of these two, uh, what could I do there? Like, like uh, can I actually get rid of those entirely uh, as I go? Also, does width over height actually need to be there anymore? Again, since the texture handle has that information, could we just you know, lean on that entirely? One of the things I'm looking at here is, is it possible to really get down to the fact, uh, get down to the point where renderer texture is all we really use, 
uh, and this stuff isn't really used at all anymore. Like is loaded bitmap, can that just be render or texture now? Uh, that's what I'm looking at, that's what I'm aiming at. I don't know how far we'll get. Uh, we'll see if we can get there. So if we wanna look at the bitmap width, bitmap height here, uh, I guess what I would say is we can actually instead look at that texture handle, right? Uh, so this texture handle here, where we uh, actually see what the texture handle is that we're looking at. Uh, this is a renderer texture. Uh, this is the texture handle. Uh, I can actually get that width and height out uh, myself. So if I want to get the width out, I can I can do that. Uh, I don't remember exactly how that works, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty simple. Uh, yeah, it looks like you just pull it, right? You just pull it out. Uh, so another way to do that actually would just be to say uh, texture handle dot width, right? And height. Uh, we just have that baked in there. And so that means in here, we can just say, look, if the bitmap width and bitmap height, that's the same as what we were doing before. Uh, and we shouldn't need anything else. Same happens here, right? This is the same thing. Uh, we know what the bitmap width and height is there because it comes out of the texture handle. We don't need uh, to get it somewhere else. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and this now no longer uh, has to happen either we just know what those two things are. So anyone who was doing that uh, can just look at those uh, directly. And again, that gets baked into the texture handle, which means that we don't need it there. Uh, so basically all of these things can go away, right? <clears throat> all right, so that was actually very simple, getting rid of the width and height. So off that goes, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So now we're really just down to some uh, of the base values. In terms of the align percentage, again, we want to start reading out of that array. That's going to be the most complicated one to change. I'm going to go width over height now. Uh, if I, if I uh, compile without that, we'll see who's actually using it. Uh, and then we'll see how to replace it. So if I come in here and look at width over height, uh, what we can see is when we get the bitmap dimension, that's really where that's getting used. Uh, and we're using that to just multiply out when you say how big you want the height to be, uh, we're just using that percentage here. We can reproduce that percentage pretty easily uh, using some kind of a safe divide. Uh, and I think most of the time we call get bitmap dim, we've already guarded against that here uh, in terms of divides by zero. So I think that's probably okay. Looking through here, we're dividing by those things anyway. Uh, so really, I think because we're doing that kind of prophylactic use uh, in, in that case, I think we can probably say uh, that this stuff is okay to use uh, in general. Now I can probably take that a little bit further. I can look to see who's actually doing uh, get bitmap dim just so we have some idea uh, of who's in charge there. You can see it getting called. So right on push bitmap, it gets called. Who else is using it? You can see it's use it here. Uh, it's being used to get the, uh, the X, Y, and the size there went to, to make that rectangle, right? That's where that's being used primarily. Uh, and then uh, in the debug code, it's actually being used there as well, okay? Uh, looking at how that's being used though, just you know, in terms of figuring out what's going on there and the bitmap scale and that sort of stuff, it's unclear to what extent we really need that entire call. Uh, it, it, it's a little bit, it, it looks a little bit squinky in that, uh, in that I'm not really sure to what extent it really needs to, uh, to occur. Let me, let me just check what it's actually doing. Uh, yeah, so looking at this, it's just a way of, of reproducing these uh, these sorts of things here. The basis P, to, uh, to what extent does basis P get used? I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at this a little bit more closely um, in terms of, uh, of, of what's happening there. So basis P does this part of the object transform. Uh, is that all that's happening? Who, who's in charge here? Like what's going on with basis P? Uh, are people using this value? Um, it looks like the min P is getting used there. Is anyone else using the basis P? And furthermore, why are we doing it that way? I don't really know. Uh, let's take a look. So if I uh, if I go out and find the bitmap, uh, that bitmap dim stuff, uh, let me go figure out where that actually happens. Uh, bitmap dim, used bitmap dim. Looking here, you know, what happens if I knock that out? Because I'm not sure I really want that to be in there anyway. Uh, who's actually using it? So you can see it being used in one place only. 
Uh, so we're going to get rid of that because, again, I'm I want to compress this code down because a lot of the stuff is residual. A lot of it's vestigial remains. So you look at what's happening here, this object transform offset P, dim P stuff, right? You can see us doing a vector add here. Why we're doing an X, Y, Z manually. Uh, if someone wants to tell me why this isn't written like this, uh, I would love it because, uh, I mean, can you see a reason why? I assume it was because we used to be doing different things there and now we're not because we're in 3D. That's totally reasonable. But what that means is that this really should just go down in here, right? So that is how we're getting that basis P out, right? We're taking the dim P and adding the object uh, transform offset. So we don't really need that. Furthermore, it means the object transform coming in here isn't used anymore. You can see that that got eliminated, right? That was the only place that that particular thing was actually being used. So once we get to that point, uh, we can be pretty sure that this is really all we're talking about here. That means this goes away and we're left with only this. It also means that these things that are being used here, we can be a little bit more careful and take a look at how they're actually being used. And we might be able to simplify that down uh, a bit more too. But for the moment, uh, we know that that's all we needed for this. So let's go ahead and take a look at, um, at what the other places that we're using that were, uh, and we can go from there. So here's another place that's using the, that get bitmap dim. So it doesn't need this transform, which is great uh, because that was just being created as a dummy transform there anyway. So that eliminates that. Uh, piece of code which was ugly no transform being used here again same thing uh where is that no transform just de defined uh so yeah no one wanted that in the first place so that's another great uh, removal again simplifying the code and getting rid of some stuff that really shouldn't have been there in the first place as things got simplified down it just naturally removed which is what you want uh anytime you can hit the delete key it's a good day so here's our width over height getting back to the thing we were actually uh, looking at removing before. So looking at that value, this get bitmap dim as it's being called, uh, I think now, you know, just looking at what's happening here, we got the, the Texel U and V stuff that's happening down here, it needs to be guarded by bitmap uh, width and bitmap height call here because we want to make sure that divide is safe. That's the part that we would have to duplicate in here. So I'm not sure to what extent we want uh, to propagate that outward. If I look to see who else is using that get bitmap dim, right? We saw where that was happening. Um, when people are calling that, the other places are not guarding against it. Uh, what I want to know here is when we're doing that stuff, when we look at get dim size, uh, we're just looking at, at doing that multiplication. It's, it's basically... Uh, it's definitely the kind of thing where checking that at the outset makes a little bit of sense because you don't have to do an if every time but i really don't know that it's worth storing the value and having to have it duplicated out like that uh it just doesn't make a lot of sense it seems like better to just do the divide every time uh because it's really not that expensive uh to take that reciprocal and it can be a fake divide it can be a reciprocal uh, so, you know, for example, if we go to the Intel Intrinsics Guide here, uh, you know, divides uh, traditionally were very <coughs> expensive. And so sometimes you get in the habit of trying to avoid them. Uh, but if you take a look at uh, the cost of them here, so if I want to do a divide, you can see, uh, generally speaking, uh, actually the throughput is not that bad, especially on Skylake, the latency is only 11 cycles, really not that bad. And the throughput's very good, uh, actually. But furthermore, uh, reciprocal. Uh, where if you want to do a, uh, a poor man's divide, for example, here, uh, you can see here uh, on Skylake, you've got uh, a pretty good throughput uh, on there as well. The latency, uh, amusingly enough, is actually not that much better than the regular divide, uh, right, on the, the div PS. It's, it's you know, uh, 11 versus 4 is obviously bad, but neither are good, right? So a 4 cycle is, is still, uh, you know, a fair bit of latency. But that's okay because, you know, our bread and butter things, mul PS, they're a four cycle latency as well. Uh, so generally speaking, you know, reciprocal, not that bad, I guess is all I'm trying to say. It's, it's really not that much different uh, than, than a basic uh, a multiply. It's, it's going to be about the same. Only instead of issuing two per a cycle, you can only issue one. Uh, so <clears throat> again, that divide, really not that bad. So maybe again, uh, at the just for simplicity's sake, I, I feel like it would be nice. Uh, to make that uh, be something that you don't have to worry about anymore and this this wouldn't have to be stored anymore. <clears throat> uh, and so that's what we're really looking at here. Now, what I'm thinking is that when we go to do a get bitmap here and we look at the, um, and, and we do the get bitmap, bit, bitmap dim here, uh, here's 
Let's see if I can find. Here's the other place that we use it. Uh, and what you can see there is it's actually using some slightly different things. Uh, it's taking that bitmap scale and it's using it to compute the full dimensions. So it's more doing the full push bitmap kind of a call uh, to draw it here. It's, it's mostly doing the same thing uh, that we were trying to do before. So, uh, yeah, like... It looks like the get bitmap dim stuff, I, I don't know. I, I'm really having a hard time deciding how I want to do this. I'm almost thinking that you, you, know, you want to kind of make this... Uh, I'm just trying to think if I want to do anything else fancy here or not. Uh, I'll leave it how it is. Let's just go with it for now. Oops. Uh, let's just go with it for now. So if I want to recreate width over height here, then basically what I'm going to do is say, look, let's assume that the thing's square for now. Uh, what we'll do then is say, okay, if I can, like if it's okay uh, to use an inversion, right? So if it's okay uh, to look at that, that bitmap width, uh, then, then I'll do the inversion. And if not, I won't. So in here, you know, we need that, um, uh, in, in here, when we're looking at using the texture handle, I think we want this kind of call to be a little bit more specific about how it's doing that texture handle. Uh, because, you know, this code will execute whether or not it has a texture handle yet or not. Uh, maybe that's not a problem. I don't know. Uh, hard to say. What I will say also is how we're assigning texture handles is probably broken right now too. Um, because nowadays we could assign a texture handle immediately, even though there's no texture backing the texture handle. And we would want to do that because it would eliminate a lot of the complexities in this call. For example, just to give you a little bit of a taste of what I'm talking about here, if I look at the asset system and you look at get bitmap here, where you're calling this get bitmap and you might return a zero, you can see it returning a zero here. We could change this into a render texture call where you actually always get the texture back every time you call it uh, because it always allows you... Um, it would always allow you uh, to pack a texture handle uh, back with the width and height of that bitmap, right? And so I feel like, you know, this code really could stand uh, some improvement. Um, we haven't done it yet, but it really could get simpler than it is right now. Uh, it could get a lot better uh, than it is right now. But I'm just gonna, I'm gonna always assume the, that the texture handle is valid because it always should be valid in the future. Uh, and even if it's not valid, the computation won't fail. Uh, if there's just a bogus width and height in there, you'll just get the wrong width and height through your bitmap. But if it wasn't loaded, you won't draw it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I'm going to assume that we can get that information out. So I'm going to take the texture handle here, uh, and I'm going to say that we can get that out of it. Here's that uh, happening right here. I'm going to say if uh, that texture handle has a width that's valid, then we can produce a width over height. Uh, that's valid because we can say that the texture handle uh, and you know what looking at it here it's really only the height that needs to be valid right uh, so I'm not sure really why we're doing that but uh, so there we go that's what we actually want to test because we don't care the width could be zero and that's totally fine uh, so this is how we would produce that on the fly you know, and our fallback will just be one because then it'll just, well, if the height was, it doesn't matter. It could be one, it could be zero. Either either or will produce the right result here because either we'll take one and multiply it by zero, or I'm sorry, either we'll take zero and multiply it by one or zero and multiply it by zero, but either one it's gonna produce a zero, so it doesn't really matter what it's set to, right? So that would solve that problem and then we don't have any accessing of that particular piece of information anymore, uh, actually anywhere, I suppose. So let's move forward a little bit on that. Uh, we can remove that now. And we can remove this entirely, right? <clears throat> uh, okay, so the bitmap width, bitmap height, stuff that happens here, uh, that all uh, flows properly now. Let's make sure we can run still so that I didn't uh, screw anything up. Uh, just make sure all of our bitmaps are still there. They all are and they all look right. Um, and so now let's finish this off by saying, well, we're down to just, you know, we want to get rid of some of these things. 
Uh, we're gonna leave this one in for now, but but we're pretty much want to get down to just passing the render uh, uh, that texture handle there. So now we're down to the one that we really wanted to work on in the first place, which is a line percentage, uh, and that's gonna be the hardest one to work with because now we actually have to think about where that's gonna come from for real. Uh, so you can see here when we call get bitmap in, we're gonna need to pass in that align percentage, um, and you're gonna see as we look through here, uh, we kind of have uh, some special purpose stuff going on. Uh, when we do load, uh, we're calling get p percent on one of these line points in order to set that align percentage up. Uh, the problem is now this is not the place to do that anymore. Why is it not the place to do that? Because our bitmaps have multiple attachment points. We cannot assume when we load a bitmap that we know which attachment point people are going to want to use because they're going to want to use multiple of them depending on the circumstances. For example, if I have a head that's floating in midair, I might use a different attachment point than if I have a a head that's attached to a body, uh, blah, 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 right? So we want to be able to have different line points. Furthermore, we need to be able to access alignment points uh, that are not necessarily uh, related to the attaching of things. Maybe there are just uh, points that we specify in there that are used for spawning special effects, things like this. So that needs to be a more general purpose thing. Uh, and you can see our to-do right there. I'm going to start by just nuking it. It's like, goodbye, it's gone. So now we're going to force everyone who was looking at that to do something better. That's gonna force it up the chain of command uh, and we're pushing back who needs to think about alignment percentage. That will complicate the outer uh, part of our code, but that's what we actually want now because that outer part of the code needs to actually be aware. It needs to think about how it's trying to align things and it needs to actually work at a higher level and that's what we're trying to do. So it's gonna make our code a little more complicated, but we need it to be. That's the point. Um, and so that's why I'm pushing this up the chain of command. That's intentional, right? So what we see here is in order to do this alignment, we are gonna need some alignment percentage. What we need to do is again, push it up the chain of command, say, look, when you pass this in, uh, instead of passing us a C line now, which is just a constant that multiplies what you are trying to align, pass us the entire alignment, right? So give us this alignment percentage as an actual V2 that we will uh, apply and you are responsible for figuring out where that's going to come from. It's not a default parameter because it's going to be specified on every single bitmap. You need to pass it in to us. So when we get down here, you can see, uh, again, it's just gonna, it's just bumping up the, the chain of command. The people outside of push bitmap calls now need to pass this in as what is the actual alignment that you want. You don't uh, have the option anymore of, uh, of, of lollygagging on that. It's going to have to come in. That means that we're gonna move it up past the color, uh, which is something you didn't have to pass in. So these default parameters here that we will still allow to be default, the align percentage is no longer one of them. That means that's gonna get passed through here. Instead of C align, there's the align percentage. Now everyone who calls that push bitmap call, uh, which is only the one that's used for sprites, has to know what's going on. That's totally fine. That's what we want, uh, so it's all good. We look in here and we see, again, we're just bumping it up the chain of command. Here's that C align again. It was the same call here. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and grab that uh, and I'm gonna push it back uh, behind the rest of the default parameters so that we can uh, actually have it uh, passed uh, from the, the outermost scope of the code, right? Because that's the part that needs to start thinking about those align percentages. And that's the part that's gonna get more complex uh, now that it has to think about that. Uh, okay, so let's see who's actually using that. All right, the align percentage uh, is in the wrong place. Gotta be over here now. Uh, we've got our, our push bitmap call. Oh, you know what? Let's use that flag. Let's use that flag. Someone in the pre-stream told us about minus WL. Uh, let's use that flag to get rid of, oh, look at it. Look at it. Look at how much nicer it is. Thank you, uh, Visual Studio team for having minus WL. Thank you, that is very nice. Okay, so here's the push bitmap call. Uh, where is it happening? It's happening in a particle system, right? So one of the things we don't wanna do in a particle system is have a lot of cost per particle. This call will probably become simpler uh, in the future. I don't care about the particles right now. I'm just gonna stub that in as a V2, uh, 0.5, 0.5. Uh, that may just be fine for most particles uh, anyway, and so we'll just leave it at that. Um, what did I do wrong there? Is that the C align value? That's the C align value, so that needs to go away as well. Uh, so it actually needs to look like that probably. What's the render group, object transform, bitmap ID, what's that real 32? 
I don't know. All right. Uh, so looking here, we've got, oh, it's height. That's what it is. So we do need that 1.0 in here. So we need the P, we need the 1.0, then we need the color, and that should do it. Uh, so I think that's all we really need there. Uh, is there something, wait, did I not get them all? There's the group, there's the object transform, there's the bitmap. Uh, oh, that's bitmap ID, sorry, it's this one. Bitmap ID, there's the height. Uh, the offset, we don't actually need. So I'm not sure what we were doing there. Uh, what was getting passed there? What was, what were we passing here? What was the call? 1.0 P and C, ah, okay. Too many parameters to these render functions. That's how it always is with render functions, unfortunately. Uh, all right, so moving forward, here's uh, the another one of those calls. There's the color, right? This is the stuff that's gonna need the actual alignment point. So I'm gonna say like align percentage here, uh, and I'm just gonna come out here and say, there's the align percentage, and that's what we actually need to set. Uh, at the moment, I'm just gonna set it to a bogus value, but this is the place where our code will become more complicated. So in terms of that, uh, I think we're good to go. Uh, we need this to take the alignment percentage in the right place. Uh, I thought it was a line percentage color. I'm just having trouble remembering that function for some reason. So it's bitmap ID, there's the height, there's the offset, there's the align percentage, there's the color. Uh, we don't need that anymore. And next, this is just our basic layer rendering stuff. Uh, so yeah, that actually is just needs to have uh, the alignment point specified here. Uh, again, that needs to be looked up in here somewhere. So we'll put it to do in there. There we go. Uh, and honestly, those don't really need to probably look up because we don't edit those. Those were always, always, those were always set to just 0.5 and that was it. Um, so, you know, unclear whether we really care about that or how much we really care about that, but you know, whatever. Uh, and so in here, we can sort of get the first align point. One of the things we could do is just for fonts, we could just say it's always the first alignment point. You know what I mean? So when we actually have the bitmap info uh, in question, the bitmap info, we could just say like get default alignment uh, or get, you know, first align or something like that. So we could actually say that we just get that here and it can, can happen off of the bitmap info. Uh, and that also could be something that we just do in the cutscene so that we don't have to care about it, right? So maybe that, <coughs> excuse me, uh, maybe that's what happens here, right? Uh, and so the bitmap ID in question uh, for this layer image that we just want to put on there, uh, maybe that's just how we how we get that ahead of time right so then we don't have to to think about it again uh, and so if we wanted to do that inside the uh, asset system there uh, should be pretty straightforward uh, how we would get that right uh, if I wanted to, to throw that in here um, if we want a utility function for how we would get this All we have to do is look back at the file format and you can see that it's got the align points here. Uh, so all we really need to do is uh, get P percent. We just need to get that uh, on the bitmap info's first alignment point. So if we know that we've got some thing that always works, uh, like for fonts and stuff like that, that's how we would do it. Uh, and we can put that inside here as well because it's actually part of this whole suite of things, sort of. Uh, so that could just come in here actually and, and operate on one of these because it's actually valid uh, everywhere, right? It doesn't require anything else. All right, 
So moving through here, what we can see is uh, it looks like that 1.0, is that the C line value? Um, I think it might be. So I think we're really looking at this maybe. Yeah, and I don't know where we're passing the align P here because I don't remember, um, but I can look. It's right before the X axis, Y axis. So it's actually, what's the 1.0? It's a C align value, so that's good. All right, so that should get rid of all of that. Uh, and this one needs it too. Uh, bitmap scale, bitmap offset, color. There we go. Um, who else? So inside here, uh, that part we don't care about at all. Uh, this bitmap dim, we don't need any V align at all. So I think here we just we could just do zero zero. I think. Um, I don't know what we would want it to be. I think we ignore it when we draw it anyway, uh, I think. So that should presumably not be relevant. Uh, let me see what goes on here. Uh, line percentage is the last thing. So I think that's about it. Uh, so now a line percentage has been pushed up one in the chain and everyone pretty much has to know uh, what they're doing here. Yeah, you can see us actually doing it here. There's us not using the align percentage. Um, so I think that's it. Uh, I think that successfully pushes everything up uh, to the top. So now everything that we draw is actually not using an alignment point at all actually. Um, except for the things that are, we know that they're baked. So like the alignment uh, points on the fonts you can see are all still working because again, we know that's just the zero slot because we make those specially. Those aren't edited by an artist. Um, and we can look here. I think the cutscenes are probably also correct. Uh, so let's take a look. We should, we should implement the title screen at some point now that we have a title. Um, cutscenes look pretty good. Everything looks right there, so I think that's also fine, right? Um, so in terms of, uh, yeah, uh, in terms of where we're at, I think we're in good shape now. So that brings us to the actual entity rendering part of things where we can now start to use these alignment points. So the first thing we'll do is just the basic test of is any of this stuff working at all? So if I take this align P here and say get first align on whatever the bitmap uh, is in question here. So you remember I had the uh, bitmap info uh, and I said get uh, bitmap info for this bitmap ID, right? Um, when we do that and we get that bitmap info back, uh, then inside this first align thing, I can actually just ask for, uh, oops, I don't know why that's lowercase. I can actually ask for the actual line point that comes from the first one of these, uh, which means that once we come down here and actually use it, um, we can use the first one. The only reason I wanna do that is I wanna see uh, if we can get it working with the editor, right? Uh, so I want real-time editing of that align point, right? So when I come through here and I select this thing uh, and I go to edit one of these align points, right, there we go. So. It's, it's, it's taking that alignment and, and, and working on it, right? Uh, and so that's what we wanted. We, and that's, that's what I wanted to see and do see, right? Uh, so that's all really good. That's all happiness and sunshine, flowery nonsense, right? Uh, so the scaling value we would like to use too, that's gonna involve a little bit of, um, of fancy footwork on our part because right now we have to go we don't really think about how the scaling flows to the pipeline. We're gonna have to do a little bit of work there uh, to make that value be rigorously defined. So I, I wanna stay away from that just for a second uh, while we work on the rest of the uh, stuff about how we pick these things, right? Um, so now what we need to do is we need to start thinking about how these scaling values are actually uh, set up. 
So it's not scary minus. Uh, alignment values are set up because we need our align points to, to snap together, right? Uh, we need that sort of, um, we need the reverse lookup part of this, right? We, we need to sort of say, hey, uh, go get an alignment point out of my previous person and, and put it in me and, and all those other sorts of things, right? So if we look at how our file formats define, it's going to be a little bit difficult, but we can probably figure something out, right? If we look in here, we've got these entity pieces, right? They're sort of the, the pieces of the entities are sort of like uh, built up out of multiple pieces. Uh, what we need to figure out here is how do we... Uh, we need to figure out some way of... of connecting each piece with its correct alignment points, <clears throat> right? So the way to think about this is we have a, uh, we have a set of definitions of what these alignment points mean. So we can tag each alignment point with what kind of alignment point it is. And then we just need some way of saying, well, you know, if this thing wants to be matched up to this other thing, we need to know which kind of matchup it's supposed to be. If this thing is saying that it should use like a head alignment, so I'm trying to align like top of neck to base of head, I need a way of, un of knowing that's the kind of connection I'm gonna do, looking for those two, uh, you know, looking for the correct one in each of them and actually applying it, right? So that's the crucial part we're trying to do here. And what I want to do first is I'm going to write a crappy version because I don't want to try to accelerate this thing. I mean, you'll notice we do this a lot. I don't want to try to make something fast before I've made it at all. Because if I do that, what I risk, run the risk of doing is over-optimizing something that we will then later change. So since we haven't worked with the system at all, I don't want to think about the speed yet because I'm nervous that I will have to change it a couple times and then the optimization work, work will go away, right? I'm not that nervous about overcoming the code. I don't get that nervous about optimization stuff. Uh, premature optimization is the root of all evil. That quote, you take it with a bit of a grain of salt, um, but the part of it that's really true is try not to waste time optimizing something that you don't end up using. That's definitely true, right? Because the, you know, if I then change the system, then all the work I did to optimize it is probably useless, right? And so that's the big thing we want to watch out for. Okay. <clears throat> so let's get going on that. Uh, let's take a look in here. Uh, w when this, this code executes, it's got this, notice, uh, this uh, uh, notion of entity visible pieces in here. So any given entity can be made up of several different uh, pieces. And that makes sense because, you know, uh, there's, there's sort of a, a, a two-tiered approach to this uh, kind of thing. There are entities that uh, are work together. So, you know, maybe I've got two different p uh, enemies in a room uh, that are controlled by the same logical brain. We have a system for handling that. That's the brain system, and it controls multiple entities, right? But there's another concept, which is just like, I have a, I have a single entity, but we just want to animate it with multiple pieces. Those pieces don't disaggregate. Like you're never going to have those pieces come apart, right? But I just need to build it up out of multiple things. I don't want them each to be an entity because they're not really entities. They're just different pieces of the same entity that get animated uh, separately from each other, right? So it's an animation conceit, not a gameplay conceit. That's what these visible pieces are. Each one of those visible pieces needs a way of sort of understanding how it is stacked, like how it is snapped together. That's what needs to be augmented in here in order for this to work. So if you look at the entity, entity visible piece thing, what we want to do is, you know, here we've got a cube layout for cubes, for example, right? Well, I might want another thing here, which is like, let's say we've got you know, an entity uh, or a, or a uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A, uh, a bitmap or whatever, right? Like, so if this thing is actually going to be a bitmap piece, so it's not a cube or a light, uh, then it might have additional data there, right? So if this is a, a, a bitmap piece. 
So I know I can do this uh, if I want. Uh, so th this is like the bitmap info that comes out of here. So in here, what I could do is I could say, all right, I know I build up this set of visible pieces. What I could say is tell me which visible piece you need to snap onto and which thing from that visible piece you're trying to snap to, right? So what I could say is, look, here's uh, the, uh, the parent piece effectively, right? So which one in this uh, in the set of visual pieces, which one am I actually snapping to? Obviously, I can make that smaller. It doesn't need to be particularly big. Uh, and then I could furthermore say, what's the, what's the type? Uh, and so in here, you know, one of the things I like to do sometimes, uh, let, me, let me add this to our system. I don't think we have that necessarily. Yeah, we do. Okay, never mind. Um, so one of the things I like to do sometimes is be a little bit more explicit about what these types are. C and C++ suck at this. Uh, they're very bad. Uh, but, you know, we can be a little bit more rigorous ourselves just, just because we can be. Uh, so what I want to do here is say, look, I've got an enum 16, so it is a U16. I'm going to tell you what the type is here just so it's a little bit clearer uh, to a metaprocessor if one was going to read this uh, or uh, just the programmer later. This is a 16-bit value, but it's storing one of these, right? And I think they finally added that to C++ sometime. I think C++ 17 finally added the concept that an enum could have a type. 30 years later, they thought maybe a programmer should be able to specify what the type of a variable was. Revolutionary concept for the late knots. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and try and get this uh, into uh, production here again, implementing it in not a particularly smart way. So if I pop back over to where we're actually creating these entities, uh, I believe that's in room gen where stuff is actually getting generated. Uh, eventually we'll probably have an entity gen, uh, but at the moment I don't think we do. So I don't know where that stuff gets set up. Maybe it wasn't in there. Uh, let me see. Let me just see where add piece is. I don't know where, where it is. Um, oh, it's still in world mode. Okay. Yeah, we... There's so much stuff we gotta, we're gonna have some fun with the generator once, because you know after that stuff all comes uh, together here. Uh, so anyway, uh, inside like add player, for example, so here's the piece of that. Uh, I'm not gonna do add player because the player is kind of not the concern right now. We need to decide some stuff about how bodies are handled uh, before we do that. I'm gonna go uh, look at the cats, right? Because I like cats uh, better than humans anyway. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and do them first. Uh, so let me find our, our where's our add cat uh, here? Yeah, here we go. So here's how we add a cat. And you can see us adding the pieces here. We say, look, this is a body, this is a head. Um, and you can see that right now it doesn't have any information about what's going on there, right? Uh, and so what I'd like to do there is kind of uh, have this notion that when you add one of these pieces, uh, and again, I, I don't know if that's in world gen, I guess, uh, add piece. Where, where is, I don't know where that even is. Add piece, where, where, where was it? Tell me where add piece gets done. I have no idea. Uh, we need to clean this stuff up so I know where any of our functions are. Uh, so it looks like add piece is in uh, entity. <laughs> okay, I already made an entity gen. Never mind. I guess I did clean it up. So I shouldn't have been complaining about myself. Maybe I was smarter than I thought I was. That's always a good day because usually it's the other way around. Uh, so anyway, if I go back to our, our, uh, our add cat call here, uh, and I want uh, to look at this, this add piece here, any visible piece comes back uh, as a pointer in case you want to edit it. Uh, and but what I'd like to really do here is just say, when you actually add the piece, I'd like you to be able to add that bitmap information to it, right? And one of the things is, you know, you see that we need this piece index here. It would be nice to get that back, right? So that we have some way of, of, of doing that reference. Um, so when we do that, you know, this entity visible piece pointer that comes back, uh, it turns out, you know, that is good enough because since we know that we're doing this construction in a local setup, we can do differencing on that array. We know they come from the same place, so that's not actually dangerous uh, in that case. So we can actually make something a little bit more expressive here. When we do that asset basic category, uh, what we can then do is say, look, we can connect pieces together, you know. Uh, and in here, I can just say, all right, 
Uh, here's the entity that I'm talking about. Uh, here's the visible piece. Uh, that's the parent. Here's the entity piece that's a child. So we're gonna connect those two together. Uh, and what I wanna say here is, all right, what's the thing on the child I'm connecting from and what's the thing on the parent I'm connecting to? Probably what I wanna say there, right? Uh, I assume. So if I come through here and say, all right, uh, what, are, what do those look like? I know that inside the file formats, I've got the list of things that they could be, right? So I kind of want to say, look, for the parent, I'm going to connect um, from the parent type, that parent type, uh, to this child type, okay? Uh, and then inside the entity, you know, I'll need to record those pieces of information. like so. And then I've still got a U16 here that I could use, right? Uh, and so we've only taken up, it's only 164 bit value. Um, and we could even make it smaller than that. You know, these could be enum eights. There's not gonna be 256 different kinds of align points, right? So we could even get it more aggressive. I don't think we need to um, for any particular reason, but we could. So if we wanna really, if we really wanna compact this down even more, right? You could do something like this. Um, and be really super aggressive with it, um, we certainly could do that, and maybe we just will. And then if we ever need more space, we can always expand that out um, in the future and, 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 and go from there, right? So we can, we can be more aggressive there, uh, and then we would just have a, one more here. And that makes this only 32 bits total to specify the complete alignment thing, um, which keeps that nice and compact. I don't remember what QV, uh, QBV layout is, but I think it's also like a 32-bit value. So it keeps this a very small. Um, this uh, set of stuff's a bit picky here. Um, we could start working on getting that down more too, uh, but that's just a, you know, a, a, we'll cross that bridge when and if we need to cross it at all. So there's our bitmap P specification stuff there, and uh, that's all we really need for that. So if I now want to define one of those, I can uh, specify that on the bitmap piece. So when we do this connect on the entity, what I need to know is uh, how, the reason that I need to pass any in the first place is, is this needs to be an index into this array, right? Like, uh, so the entity has an array of these um, right about here, right? So it has uh, this list of pieces and it needs to know which one I'm talking about in that array, but I'm passing a pointer. So in order to get which uh, one it is out of that pointer, I just want to do some math there, right? So I've got uh, the entity pieces, uh, visible pieces, what is it called? I just looked at it, but of course I wasn't paying attention to that, just pieces. Um, so I know that's the base. So if I subtract uh, the parent, um, uh, if I subtract that from the parent, I get how many array slots it is to get to the parent, which is that index that I want, right? Uh, so this in this case is the parent index. Uh, and I can assert here that I could truncate it. So I could do a safe truncate uh, to U8 here. Uh, and say, look, assert if you ever, for some reason, have more than 256 of these, because I'm not storing that. 256 pieces is not allowed in the system. That would be an entity with so many pieces that you really should be representing it as multiple entities, I think, at that point. This, is, this game does not want that. It would be impossible to even see what was going on there, so we're not gonna do that um, just right off the bat. So anyway, <clears throat> Uh, we can save truncate these as well, uh, and then that allows us to set the entire thing up, right? So all we need to do now is say, all right, uh, actually what we can do here is just say, well, we know that we're going to have one of these uh, entity, you know, we know what we're setting uh, is one of these bitmap piece things. So here's the bitmap piece. Uh, it's gonna be off of, oops, off of the child. I can assert that the child uh, is a bitmap type, right? So that it's not any of these things. Um, so I, I can I can uh, I can assert that we're not trying to set something that shouldn't have one of these in the first place. So I can say you know assert that the flags um, and you know what I could do it even right here. I could say like uh, look, there's this concept uh, 
that a piece is a bitmap. Uh, and all I'm going to do there is say that the flags uh, had better not have either of those two things in it, right? So piece cube, and piece light. <clears throat> are not allowed. So if I and these two things together, what I'm really looking for is, did anything get set? So if nothing got set here, then we're good to go. If something got set here, then we're not. Um, so that's all we need there. I can assert now that this, this is a bitmap piece, which is what I wanted. I can then access this member of it with the confidence that it should be accessed at all. I can then set up the pieces that I want. Uh, by just setting the values to the what we had the person pass in they should be, uh, and then we're done. So that's how we would connect two pieces together, right? That means inside our add cat call, uh, where we're actually trying to add the cat, right here, uh, is after I do these, I am now, I can say like visible piece, I can store, <clears throat> each of those, and now I can connect them. So I can connect the body and the head, like so. I can say I want the body, because uh, we, again, inside the file formats there, we know we have top of head and base of neck. So I can say that I want the top um, of the head to connect to the base of the neck or whatever, right? Uh, actually, no, sorry, the default, because again, uh, there is no base of head. So it's just whatever its default one is. I want that to connect uh, to the base of the neck, right? And I so so line those two pieces up, okay? All right, so uh, I gotta do a couple other things here. Uh, enum eight needs to be defined. So inside types, uh, we need again that full set, and I'll just make sure we have uh, all of them because they're all uh, good. <clears throat> And again, C++ did finally add these, but I, you know, I'm so done with C++ at this point. I don't even bother using new features because it's just like waiting to find some special, uh, you know, uh, anti-programmer mind that the C++ committee has left in the feature so that it ends up uh, being terrible and you wish you'd never use it, which is how every, literally every feature I've ever tried of C++ is. Um, so <clears throat> uh, I would recommend not going down that route, but you're welcome to go. Uh, you're welcome to have a, a party there, bring your Minesweeper. Um, uh, you know, bring the canary down the coal mine, make sure uh, when you see it die, stop using the feature. So here we have uh, the, the errors for the connect piece function that we just did. We don't have, we actually don't have a, um, that safe truncate feature yet, right? Because we've only ever done, I think, the safe truncate uh, to U32. Uh, so what I want to do is make sure that we've got uh, the other ones of these. So you can see they're really simple functions. All they do um, is they really are just a cast, but they're a way of just making sure before you do the cast that someone um, would have would have uh, complained. It, 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 you know, in debug mode, someone will complain prior to doing the cast if it couldn't fit, right? Oops, uh, that's that. Uh, so that's really all I wanted to do there. Don't ask me why, I forgot to rename the function. <clears throat> Uh, but that's all we really need. And now inside here, we've got the parent piece. Uh, I'm going to call that uh, parent piece instead of parent index because, I don't know, I, I like that better, I guess. <clears throat> Could call either one. Uh, let's see. From int64, what? What are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think that's all we really need to do. Uh, we got the align type here uh, specified. So I think that's it. And so now we can specify that how the cats are supposed to be attached up, right? Uh, unfortunately, it won't do anything. Why? Because if we want to do anything, we have to actually implement code that uses that. 
shouldn't be too hard, right? <clears throat> because inside here, uh, it's pretty easy for us to figure out where our pieces actually are and, and then do sort of the retcon on it. Now, one of the things that we have uh, when we do the on top versus not on top, uh, this is no longer true, thankfully. Zero is the most on top and is most on bottom. Uh, not true anymore, right? Uh, so what we want, because we just sort. Uh, so what we want to do here is on entity visible piece, what we want to do is specify parents must always come bef uh, before children. Uh, and I'll show you why we need to do that in a second. Uh, but what I want to do is rigidly enforce that rule. It's going to make our lives a lot easier. Because <clears throat> we, can, we can do it in one loop instead of doing it in two. So in here, what I'd like to do is enforce that rule. You can see how I got my uh, index before. Uh, what I'm going to do here is add another assertion, which says that let's make sure that the parent piece, whatever that was, is less than the child piece. So whatever the child's location in the array is had better be greater than the parents. And so what we'll do now is we'll run the code and we'll make sure that that passes. And if it doesn't pass, uh, then we know we add them in the wrong order, right? So for example, if I had uh, in, in that, gen, you know, that add cat thing, where is that? Oops, maybe gen add cat. So in the add cat thing, what I wanted to do here is say, well, let's suppose that the head was defined first. Well, now what should happen is we should get an error. It should actually stop us from creating the cat. And there it is. So that's just a layer of protection to make sure we don't accidentally do that wrong. So now what we can do is inside the entity uh, rendering code. So when we're actually doing this, what we can do is we know there's a fairly complicated set of code, as you see, for figuring out where each piece is, right? This is relatively tricky here. We're doing all kinds of deformation, whatever nonsense, right? So at the end of the day, we finally find out where the heck this thing goes, right? Um, we would now like to be able to specify uh, some additional information about it, right? We want uh, some kind of information about where the thing went. And this actually becomes even trickier than uh, we think it is because we're going to have to do one more piece of, uh, of rather tricky work here to make sure that we can even uh, know where each individual piece ends up. Now, why do I say that? <clears throat> I say that because you'll notice what happens inside push bitmap is we pass down an align P, but we never find out where the bitmap actually ends up, right? So if you look in here, when we do that, uh, that get bitmapped in, this is the information we actually need on the outside and we never get it, right? We never get it. Uh, so what I'm almost gonna say we need to do here is I think what we actually need is we need to move this code to the outside as well. Now, all the places that we're calling this suggest to me that we probably want to leave it in place, uh, but we want to provide a version of just this interior bit that you can call. Like I think we want this here, right? Uh, we want this to be actually something you can call directly by itself. So with all of the other information, uh, you can actually proceed from there. Make sense? Uh, and so if I call this function, I need all of the information that comes with it, uh, you know, from, from all of this stuff. So I'm gonna copy that in like so. Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is say, instead of the object transform, which I don't believe gets used anywhere. Does it? Oh, no, it does. Never mind. Um, so in addition to the object transform, I guess then I should say, uh, I guess it's the height maybe that's not used. No, everything's used. Uh, you are expected to pass in the, the used bitmap dim, right? So you've got to actually use that. And again, we may want to simplify that part of the code 
in the future uh, because at this point, now that we kind of see how things are going, it's prob we're probably not really passing the right set of stuff, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm gonna pass the dim in there and then everywhere here that was using the dim, which is like actually just that, those two places, right? All of that stuff is now captured inside uh, this routine so that we can do it in two steps if we need this information. And we do because we need to know the actual dimension and size of this thing. If we don't know the actual dimension and size of this thing and the placement of it, right? We won't be able to properly attach things to it because we won't know where it is. If we just allow the thing to automatically move it for us, then we don't really have any way of ourselves using that information later. So now what we need to do is do this in two steps, right? We need to first do this step here uh, and we can do that up above uh, here if we wanted to, I guess, but I guess, I guess we have to make sure it is actually a bitmap first. Um, so here we would do, uh, you know, the bitmap dim, I'll spell that out, bitmap dim. Uh, and we'd pass all the same things we were passing here And then we just pass them again. So inside here, what do we need? We need the bitmap, uh, the loaded bitmap. So we don't really need the transform. We just need the bitmap. Uh, we need the piece dimension Y. We need the offset. We need the alignment percentage. Uh, we need the X axis and the Y axis. We don't need the color. Uh, once we have that, we can pass it in and go from there. Uh, we don't want to use this one anymore. We want to use this one directly. Uh, so we need to pass the bitmap itself, not the idea anymore. Uh, we need to pass the height. That's good. The offset is good. The align percentage is good. The color, the XS, Y axis. Okay. So that is what we need to do for making it into a two-stage function call. And uh, where does that come out here? Okay. And again, I think like this code is really overbearing now. So I feel like we'll be able to simplify that down in the future. Uh, but that's separate issue. So, all right, so inside here, what we need now is to get that bitmap. Uh, so when we, you know, loaded uh, bitmap, bitmap equals get bitmap and so on. Uh, let me see where that's actually getting used. It doesn't get used till there. Um, just looking through it here. Yeah, so I feel like, I feel like this stuff can just happen down here probably, right? Looks right, does that look good? Uh, so yeah, if we got this bitmap and we look up its info and so on, right? Yeah, uh, then we just need to make sure we actually ever got one. Uh, and furthermore, we don't really need this lookup anymore because the bitmap info is just, uh, pretty sure it's just that, right? That not true. So where's the loaded bitmap? All right. Well, never mind. I'll I'll use the get call still. I don't remember where it comes from. Okay. So I think we're done with that, and now what we need to do is actually utilize that information. Let's make sure we're still actually getting any bitmaps here. Okay. So we're not. So we're not quite getting this right. Um. So I think that may be because inside get bitmap here, I think you have to queue a load bitmap on it. If we can't get it, yeah, we do. So you can see here what has to happen there. Um, so I need to, to queue that uh, in order to, to, to force the thing to, you know, to, to ask for it, right? Uh, so here I'll actually do that. And again, I think we wanna clean this stuff up.
so, because we really don't need to be doing it the way we're doing it, we can simplify that stuff a, a lot. Um, but anyway, so moving along, uh, the bitmap ID we know, so that's pretty easy. Uh, and that's the render group. So I think that's fine. That all looks good. Uh, and off we go. So we should now have uh, all of our stuff rendering as it was before. Uh, and we mostly do, except uh, this part of the code doesn't thunk through. Uh, so I didn't quite finish in asset rendering. This has to call push bitmap uh, with all the with all the junk. And you can just see why I say this is overwrought. There's just too much garbage happening now, and a lot of this stuff could be simplified down and, and should be eventually. All right, so now we're back to where we want to be, and it means that now inside the entity, we can uh, actually track where things really are. What that means is we can look at what the entity piece count has to say. Um, so if I go back to the entity structure, we can see that we've got like a set of entity pieces. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to be able to have uh, a set of uh, like a set of rectangles that tell me where the people were who I was working with, right? So if I take all the uh, rectangles here, this will allow me to capture where I drew things so I can then essentially solve for where each, when, where any parent was, right? Um, if as I step through the array drawing each individual piece, I say wherever this piece was, I'm gonna write back where I thought it was when I finally put it into world space and started to draw it. Uh, if I put that into the rectangle knowledge here, that will allow me to then take alignment point information that I get from uh, the snapping information, right? That connection information. I can look up where things are in the piece rectangles and know where the parent was, right? Um, I'm trying to think of what exactly I want to store there. And I'm thinking what I really want uh, is maybe just the X and Y axes because I think that tells me everything I need, right? I just need like the transform. So I basically need a three by three matrix, right? I just need like, I need like what the origin point was and the X and Y axes because I need to then be able to like move these things out along those. Like that's basically what I'm doing here. Uh, and that pretty much tells me how I need this thing to be aligned. So, you know, thinking about it a little bit more specifically here. Uh, again, like, this could probably be simplified quite a bit. Um, if we look back at our math code um, and we, we look at what we actually, I don't, oops, um, I don't remember what we had stored in here in terms of like matrices and things like that. Let's see, do we actually have any? We don't. Well, we do, we have M4x4s. So looking back at what we have here, right, we've got M4x4s, they're over-specified for what we need, but we could use them um, just because we already have them. Like we don't need a full 4x4 because there's no proje projection here. Um, but maybe that's fine. Uh, so, If I look at the piece transform array here, uh, then I can sort of say, well, all right, 
anytime I'm going to update a piece, I'm gonna produce the transform for that piece, and then I'm going to uh, use that to align anyone else who needs to get aligned to it, right? And since we produce these axes here, you know, thinking it through, we may now want to sort of pull back a little bit and have that, have the alignment points just be things that work sort of like a skeleton here. Because again, now we're sort of getting to the point where it's really not necessary, the stuff that's being done in there. And you really just want to split it into the font rendering code, which uses the alignment points in a very fixed way and doesn't have to do anything interesting with them. And then the actual in-game sprite code, which wants to have a fairly complex relationship, right? I'm going to start by not doing that. And then I think what I want to do is go clean up that code so that we have a much more straightforward way of writing all these things in, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Here's the piece transforms uh, in question. What I want to do is say for each piece index, we're going to write that transform out. So in here, what I'll do is say, well, when we get all this stuff, right, all of this information, uh, we then have the ability to write in a matrix that would have the pieces we need. Uh, we know we're not going to have any rotation, uh, but we are going to have translation. Uh, and we might have uh, 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 axes that we put directly in. So we're not going to call this X, uh, this X rotation stuff, uh, but we may slam axes directly in there at some point uh, as well, right? So, so we've got some stuff that's going to happen in there for sure. Uh, okay, so if we want that to, to work, how are we going to do this exactly? Uh, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm just not seeing a way to do it other than to actually really start pulling this stuff out into here. Because if you look at how this stuff works, right, we've got stuff that modifies how the axes actually work. You can see this us generating these upright transform axes here, right? Um, and so for anything that was actually doing that upright transform, we need to actually have that um, work inside here and all that stuff. I just, I feel like a lot of that stuff is going to end up being, uh, you know, th that stuff really has to be done in a more, we've got to start making this stuff a little bit more coherent. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say, let's just do it. How much time do I have left? What do we got? Like 25 minutes? I don't know. Uh, it's a very good question how much time we have. Anyone? Anyone know how much time we got? Anyone? Nobody knows. It's all right. Uh, the stream thing will tell us. I think, but I think I want to. I want to kind of push through that. So if I compile this first, let's let's make sure we're still compiling here because um, I don't think we are. Uh, just need to knot that out. Okay, uh, so what we want to do now is we want, oh, and you can see here like this stuff, uh, this stuff is actually going to be getting done. All of this, uh, the part of that that was relevant is now going to be actually happening as well, which is nice. Uh, okay, so what I want to do now is I want to actually go through and figure out who's calling push bitmap and why. And I want to clean that up. So what you can see here is that we've got the debug code calling push bitmap here. We've got the dev UI calling it here, the cutscene, the particles. So there's a total of five people calling it. Debug system, dev UI, cutscene, particles, and entity. I want entity to now basically be just doing its own thing, almost entirely. I know that the debug system, the dev UI, the cutscene, the particles, they aren't using the more complicated stuff there, right? So I think, and I could be very wrong about this, but I think in here, uh, I, I don't know who's actually using this upright transform information or why, but what I want to do is move that out so only the entities do it and it's a specific thing that they do, 
right? So there it is in the push bet call, push. Uh, it's in the push bet Mac call there. Um, does anyone else use it? So that's just a generic call. Yeah. So I think what I want to do here is get that upright idea. I want that upright idea to go away entirely. So we're going to start there. So this is going to go away. The object transform will not tell you that information. And then I'm going to fix it. So now these are both the same, okay? So they can collapse down to just be default transform. That's fine. Keep going. That's fine. All of these are fine. What else we got? Okay. So now we should essentially have only one person who cares about this upright flag and it is the push bitmap call that we were using here, right? And that's to get this like upright sprite stuff happening. So what I want to do there is, uh, and, and what is the push upright? So that actually does this thing here, which is different from this. It's actually a different way of doing it, right? Um, I'm not sure how they're, where this is coming from. So it's actually getting computed outside of push upright. Interesting. So I think what we could do here is, again, start treating push bitmap uh, a little more harshly and force the people who call it to do something more specific. So first of all, we could start by doing this, which is not what we're going to finish with, uh, but we can do this. Right, And now we can sort of see who's actually calling this and why and from where. You know what I mean? Um, I would be interested to know if anyone's actually doing this. And furthermore, since I know, I guess I know nobody really needs this upright path mm, pretty much anyway. So I think we could just say, like, look, it's false. Right? Um, and so then the only person who cares is here. Uh, and so the upright transform stuff is just whether or not this entity is supposed to be upright or not. You know what I mean? Uh, and so I don't actually know where we were getting that or how we would get that information um, otherwise, I guess we just always assumed it was upright, I guess, which is not something we necessarily want to assume, but that is, I think, what we were doing. So really, now it just looks like that, right? Oops. So I think that's sufficient for how we were doing it before, right? See, there's all of our rendering still looks fine here, right? All this stuff works. 
Um, similarly, I assume that the, uh, yeah, this all works just fine too. Um, and all of this stuff should work just fine. Yeah, so everything's still intact, no issues there. Um, and we're good to go. Now, <clears throat> if I go through now and actually try to simplify down, what do those people actually need to call? I'm going to start with the cutscenes, which are the most basic thing, right? And you can see what they pass. Default transform here does not get modified other than to give an offset to the thing. Um, which could just be specified as a position. And so what I'm gunning for a little bit is I want to figure out if I can just get rid of those entity transforms. I don't like them. They're stupid. Uh, they're just nonsense that you could have just done yourself, right? You could have, you could have handled these separately. So let's find out to what extent I'm right. First thing is get rid of scale. Does anyone actually ever set it to anything? No. So scale is irrelevant, completely irrelevant, right? There's no scale happening. So if I just get rid of scale, we're down to the fact that this is just an offset, right? And that's the end of it. It wasn't used at all. So now if we just get rid of object transforms, period, I'm just curious to know what do we actually get as a result? All right, so if we do get render entity basis P, it just adds those two things together. It happens only in push rect. So literally all that would be doing is adding whatever the object transform thing was. So what I'd rather do here is say, look, that's just the P value that comes in, right? So we're done. I don't want to know about any of this. You can just do it yourself. So don't bother me, right? And so if I wanted to do that that way, what I could say is, well, the P and the basis P, right? Uh, the offset comes in. I just do the thing with the dim. This is just an add of these two. So really basis P is just P at that point. Um, P itself is never used. Only basis P is, right? So what I could do then is say, all right, basis P is this. Um, done. Our, now our push rec call is much simpler uh, and off we go. Similarly here, we wouldn't need the object transform uh, for that. Uh, we could just use uh, an offset there. I'm not sure how I want to do that one exactly because it's not taking a 2D thing. I don't even know if I want that call anymore because I'm not sure what a 2D rectangle is supposed to be doing in that case, but we can figure that out a little bit later. All right, so this call, just I just want to get rid of that call. It doesn't belong. Um, so now we have, I'm going to push a volume outline. There's a rectangle 3D. Um, all that happens there is like the object transform was just an offset that got added on. So again, not necessary, right? And I'm just pulling this out because, I, like I said, don't like it. Don't think it belongs there. Um, so there's rectangle two. There's object transform. Don't want that. No, no, bad, goodbye. Okay. Uh, continuing through, object transform, again, don't want it. So really all that happens here is we just don't do the transform. Same thing here, don't do the transform. So people just pass in what they wanted in the first place. Uh, same thing here, don't do the transform. There we go. Uh, so all of these things where we're just uh, talking about a bias there, uh, 
that has to be added. I'm just gonna call that a V3. Like so. Because uh, all that's used for is sorting in the first place. Uh, let's take a look at push bitmap. It takes an object transform here. I don't want that. So I'm gonna get rid of it. Um, let's take a look at where object transform is being used. It was being used here to uh, specify that piece, which I don't want. Same thing here. Let's get rid of that. Uh, all these things can go. Uh, and again, it's just overdue clean out, right? We just want to get rid of these things that don't do anything um, so that we can simplify how the render is working and, and make it clear. Uh, we don't need any of this. Uh, we don't need any of this. Uh, when we do push this pick, push rect uh, here, we would need an offset. So we kind of need on here just a thing that's like, where is the entity? Probably. Um, I don't know that draw hit points actually gets called anymore. So there it is. Uh, and so the entity transform bit here, what we really want to do is just... Uh, have this value right um, so we would just pass that in because that's what it was actually getting so it needs it up in here like uh, when we do draw hit points it would need that ground point and then when it's you know every time something in here happens uh, where it's gonna draw something like in here uh, these are always going to be like ground P plus the thing, you know. All right, so moving on. Uh, debug pick entity is not really a thing anymore. We sort of implemented that uh, directly. Like, I'm just going to get rid of this. We did a better version of that already. Uh, inside object transform now, uh, this part again just got removed so we can eliminate entirely. This, anyone who's using this is now just doing entity ground P. That's all that they're doing there, right? That's entity ground P and that's all that's happening. Uh, so that really doesn't need the entity transform. Same thing here, right? This location that it's being uh, specified at is just entity ground P. So none of that ever needs to happen anymore. And you'll see why I'm pulling this out. As I bubble it up, you'll see why I want to get rid of it because we actually don't want that. We don't want those transforms happening down in the render. It was a bad place for it. We had reasons at the time. Uh, those reasons are gone. So, uh, yeah, this again is just entity ground P. We're not actually calling these anymore, but if we were, uh, we would, you know, not want to call that. Uh, so here we've got another situation where we do want an offset P in this case. Um, of course, we could just do, um, I think we could just roll it all into the computation of P by itself. Uh, but in order to, you know, not have bugs that I might introduce by doing that, since I don't care uh, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and put it in here. And uh, then when we actually go to do the, the rendering of this thing, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that the, you know, the way that we compute uh, this stuff is just like kind of convoluted and strange, but oh well. So it's offset P
you know what? Why isn't so P Y? Hold on a second. So looking at this, we don't actually use PY. Except in here, wow, so this is like, so P is actually not used. Only offset is, that's kind of nuts. So really, I don't know, for whatever reason, we ended up writing it this way. So we actually don't use P. We just let it flow through that way and we, we use that, which I guess is fine. I think that's right. I'll have to test that because I'm not sure I understood that quite right, but you know, hopefully we did. All right, so here we've got uh, our shadow transform and our text transform. Uh, and so then down here when we actually use our shadow transform and text transform, it's really just this. Right, um, and uh, we don't actually need to do anything else there because those are just things that uh, offset the Z for rendering purposes, sorting purposes. Uh, here when we do no transform, well, no transform is pretty easy because that just means we delete it, which is exactly what we would like to do with it. And then we've got the backing transform for the box. So in here, what we'd like to do is we'd like to offset that box um, by this Z value. And so I think that is the Z value. So I'm pretty sure that that is what that would do. You know what I mean? Uh, inside that push rect, uh, we may want to just take an offset here in general. So, you know, I, I might argue that the better thing to do there uh, for the 2D push rect call is rather than specifying a Z, uh, specify an offset. And that way in here, what would actually happen is you would say, oh, okay. So when we actually push this on, uh, we, we pass down, um, for the, for the rect outline stuff, when we do the offset, we just say that uh, it's this. You know what I mean? Um, and again, this could stand to be cleaned up a little bit too, but <clears throat> all right. Uh, so then the backing transform just comes on there and that's good. Uh, same thing here. So there's the tool chip. It goes in, oops goes in there. Uh, yeah. What's the problem? Oh, I know what the problem is. Oh no, I don't know what the problem is. So push rect in this case, what's, what's the deal? The bounds, uh, renderer. Push rect. I thought I just changed this. Oh, it was rect outline that I changed. So I need that too. There we go. Oops. All right, so I think that's all good. Um, now I just gotta clean that up a bit. Uh, so here's push rect. It doesn't have an offset, so that's the zero offset there. So, you know. So that's all well and good. Same here. I guess it doesn't care where it's pushing that. Same here. Oh, 
all of this stuff is just um, initializing these V3s. So since they would all be cleared initially, I believe we wouldn't really need to do this. Um, right, that's not actually necessary, uh, but I could just do it anyway. There's a tooltip transform. Here's the text transform. Uh, here's the UI transform. Uh, here's the shadow transform. And there's the backing transform. All right. Um, what else we got? So doing our push tricks here, again, we have the UI transform stuff. We know that doesn't actually happen anymore. So what is the base Z that's happening here? Okay, so this, this is some kind of a sorting thing we're doing for like letting our pro profile bars be thing. So I do want to effectively have like a, an addition that happens here, right? So this, this wants to be a real thing. So we, we're gonna say, all right, take the UI transform in this case and add some to it to get, you know, keep the sorting happening the same way as it was happening before. Um, in here, again, same thing. So in this case, uh, we just need to uh, add this on where we've got uh, the base Z, kind of tacking itself on there. Uh, and that should be it. Right. Yeah. Uh, no transform is good because no transform means we don't care what it is. Uh, no transform there, we don't care as well. Uh, the UI transform in this case uh, just comes right in there. And uh, this is a one, so that's a UI transform plus uh, one Z. And what else, what else you got for me, compiler? Um, right, we don't need that anymore. What else we got? No transform. Backing transform. That's in here. Uh, and off we go. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. All right, so it looks like we're out of time. I'm just going to go ahead and finish this up, and then we'll do Q&A. Uh, I would like to run it once, though, and do any light debugging uh, while we're still here. And then I'll end for the day. This is just added to our position, right? Yeah, there we go. Okay, and sorry, there's so many changes here. Oops. Backing transform in this case, so get clipped wrecked uh, in, I'm not sure uh, what we decided to do for get clip rect. Let me just look at that one real quick. So it's just the Z value that comes in there. So that's just this. And that still works actually just fine. So no, no issues there. Same here. That's all easy. Uh, this get clip rect similarly wants to be like this. Um, what else we got? No transform, that's good. Anything else? No. Uh, all right, so let's just see what we broke. Um, looks like we've got a entity placement break. Uh, although only for those bitmaps. So it looks like that one bitmap broke, that one kind of drawing broke, but nothing else did. 
looks like. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get rid of this stuff anyway eventually. I don't know why all that junk there, but um so I think the only thing that I broke was inside the entity stuff uh in here. So I guess for some reason um when we were doing our push bitmap here, I didn't add the offset. Uh, and actually, you know what? You can see that's 100% true, actually. Uh, but that's fine, because that's the code that I'm gonna uh, wanna start off on tomorrow anyway, and because that's the part we're gonna be rewriting. All right. So that was a pretty easy change to make, actually. I'm happy about that. That went really well. Uh, so now we've got rid of that. Uh, and again, we're simplifying this code down, which I want to do uh, for sure, right? Like I, I want to keep making this uh, uh, less and less uh, complex. Used bitmap dim will probably now bifurcate that out. Uh, and so there'll just be two calls, one that happens for the font stuff and one that happens for uh, the entity render stuff and it'll get pushed into that actual routine. Um, so as we progress down that road, I think we'll get even cleaner. I'm going to go to a quick Q&A now, and then we'll wrap it up. Mm -hmm. Questions, questions, questions. Oh, any news about Meowhash? Uh, yes, actually, there is some news about Meowhash. I have been too busy to post a new version, but uh, actually we have a stronger version of Meowhash coming um, that runs about as fast as the old one. It's only slightly, just a little teat slower, but it's actually a much stronger hash. Um, but I haven't had a chance to post it yet. Ooh, uh, good pro tip from Long Boolean. Not actually important, but Krampus related. The L-A-U-F in Krampuslof is pronounced more like ooh in the words ouch. Oh, so more like ow or couch. Um, in German, the A in Krampus is more of an ah, so Krampus. So it's more like Krampuslau. Is that right? Krampuslau? Long Boolean, can you tell me how close I'm pronouncing it now? Kromfoslau? Is Kromfoslau better? Kromfoslau? Is the P hard or soft? Is it Kromfoslau or Kromfoslau? Like P or H. Which is happening there? Uh, let me go ahead. To start. I forgot why sorting was necessary. Couldn't we just send it all to the GPU and have the depth of the sorted out? Uh, yeah, that is that is what we do. Um, but we used to sort because we used to not have a depth buffer. Um, we decided after testing that we really wanted it. Um, so that's why we don't have to sort anymore, if that makes sense. Uh, when I said I wanted these sorted in order uh, of parenting, that is not Z order. The reason that I want that here is because we're gonna want to go, th we're gonna want to do a single pass through the list and children need to look back at where their parents were in order to place themselves in the right position. So I just wanna make sure parents always come before children. So that's a different kind of sort. It's not about Z order, right? Can you put the shadow offset in the shadow transform now? Uh, probably, I don't really remember where that's happening. <clears throat> I don't think we're doing that anymore. Yeah, I don't think we are. I think it's just, it just is that transform. That's all the only thing we've got at the moment. Uh, when do you play that should be in the game? I'm looking forward to playing it. Oh, uh, well, we've got a while. 
we we don't do that many hours of programming each week so we, it's gonna be a while uh, we're mostly done with the engine but we've got a bunch of gameplay code to do so you know you're looking at a while I also I said I would do 600 episodes so 494 so we've got 106 episodes before we would ship it just just on principle alone Any particular reasons to use Windows over Linux? Yeah, you can look at the episode archive. Um, if you go back to uh, handmadehero.org watch, the watch page, uh, you can search previous episodes for things like uh, Linux. And uh, there, we talk about Linux a bunch of times uh, in various places here. The sh so if you want more I I information, you can, uh, uh, or you know, another one would be why Windows? Um, let's see, uh, I don't, know if, I don't know if there's a way to search for why not Linux. Um, so you might have to search in there a little bit to see, uh, the more complete answers, but the basic reason is just because games ship primarily on windows. That's why. So handmade hero is made to be portable. And in fact, already runs on Linux and Mac in a number of places because community members have ported it. We have not done the porting on the stream yet. Cause that's the thing I said I would do later on. Um, so portability is very important because you know you want to ship on multiple platforms. A lot of times you want to ship on PS4, Xbox One, and Windows as a minimum, you know, uh, of what you'd like to target usually. Uh, and then depending on your game, you know, Nintendo Switch, uh, Mac OS, Linux potentially as more like just finishing to get all the platforms if you've gone that far. Um, the reason we do Windows is because it's the easiest development environment that everyone can have access to. Right, like uh, if I picked PS4, for example, you'd have to be dev, uh, you'd, you'd have to be members of the development uh, community there. Like you have to have Sony approve you to get, and you'd have to have a dev kit, right? So I can't really do that. Um, so I have to pick something that's, uh, you know, that's commodity available. You can just go out and buy it. You don't need to get approval. You don't, need, you know, and, and, it, and it runs on a regular computer. So Windows, um, and of Windows, Mac, Linux, um, by far, like almost all games on the PC are sold uh, the Windows version. So I just went numbers wise, right? Um, and so you really have to have Windows be your foremost platform. Some of that may change, but right now Linux and Mac just don't account for very many uh, uh, of your sales. So Windows is where you need to make sure you're good because that's where most of your sales will come from. It's your most important platform. And then Linux and Mac are like what you port to, right? Um, <clears throat> How much time do you think game devs should spend refactoring code compared to writing new features? I often find it discouraging when I spend too much time refactoring spending code without adding, adding anything new for a while. Um, you should never refactor anything that you're not refactoring to do something new, I guess is the way I would say it. Um, so the answer is you should never be spending time refactoring code if you're not doing it to add a new feature or to improve its performance. Like refactoring should only be done to as something you do during improvement. And it should be relatively obvious at the time to an experienced developer what sorts of refactoring, I'm not really a fan of that term, what sorts of uh, restructuring might have to occur in order to move the code forwards. Um, and that's something that you can only really learn by experience because sometimes it's more efficient to simply modify the little piece of code you need to add the feature you're looking for. Other times it's, it's clear that in order to do that, you want to fix something, right? Um, and so that's, I guess what I'd say is the only piece of strong advice I have there is never spend time restructuring code without an idea of why you are doing it. So a lot of people preach too much puritanical sort of things about code. Code that works properly is good and code that doesn't work properly is bad and that's pretty much the end of it. So when you look at a piece of code and you're going, should I be restructuring this code some way? Never just restructure it to restructure it. You should have an idea in your head of why. What am I getting? 
Am I getting increased speed? Am I getting less bugs? Am I getting um, new features? And if you don't have one of those strongly in mind, then you're just kind of wasting your time. Long volume, you're dropping the F. Oh, okay. So when you said that you pronounced the Krampuslau, uh, the ow, you still, you didn't mean get rid of the F. You just mean, don't say lauf, say lauf. Is that what you're saying? So it's Krampuslauf, Krampuslauf. Uh, off topic, do you have any tips on parsing academic math papers? No, uh, they're written by people who seem to be unable to communicate with humans. I don't know why. Um, you just have to grind through them. It's terrible, I know. Uh, I don't know why that happens. I don't know why. Every single math paper I've ever seen, after I spent the time to actually understand it, I could have explained it crystal clear without all of the ridiculousness. For some reason, they just don't do that. I don't know why. I have no idea why. I, I really don't. Just bad convention, I guess. Okay, so Krampuslau is bad. Krampuslauf is good. So Krampuslauf, Krampuslauf. I don't know. It's Krampuslauf. We are going to save the changes to the scale alignment point back to the file uh, they are coming from. Yes, uh, we're going to be doing a couple things there, yeah. In the text op, it still offsets the text. Um, sorry, what, uh, hmm. In the text stop, it's still offset the text. Uh, is that, but, but that's good, right? I mean, wh why is that bad? Uh, I mean, it, it look, looks, looks right to me. Uh, could you be more specific? Off target, I've heard you mention other memory management techniques than the arenas as used on Handmade Hero. Um, sure, there's lots of memory management techniques, uh, but arenas are a very powerful one and pretty important. Um, the ones we use on Handmade Hero are really the bread and butter ones I think you should use most of the time. So there's hand, the, the arenas, and then there's um, free lists, which we use. Those are two of the most powerful, simplest, and get you almost everything you want memory management techniques, but there are obviously more. Um, should you try to use multi-threading as much as possible or the other way around, or does it just depend a lot? Um, <clears throat> so here's what I'll say. I've done a lot more multi-threaded programming recently, even than I had done when I originally started Handmade Hero, uh, you know. Um, multi-threaded programming is very, very difficult. It's far, far more difficult than single-threaded programming. So much more difficult that I think you really want a lot of language features to help you do it properly, which don't exist in C++. Um, and that's a, an issue. Any time you can get away with not writing multi-threaded code, you should because your code will have less bugs in it. However, it is increasingly becoming the case that almost all code needs to be multi-threaded in order to run on modern systems fast enough because sy modern systems just aren't getting much faster single-threaded. They're only getting faster multi-threaded. So I guess what I would say is there's no good news. Yes, try to write as little multi-threaded code as possible. No, you really can't limit how much multi-threaded code you're running unless your games are very simple. And uh, yeah, C++ is a terrible language for multi-threaded programming. It has literally zero of the features that you would want. Uh, and so it's just bad. And um, the more I learn about multi-threaded programming, the more I've developed my, my own multi-threaded programming techniques, the more I realize just how hard it is. So hard, in fact, that I actually think that it breaks a lot of things too that other people are relying on like garbage collection just doesn't work for multi-threaded programming either um it's just completely wrong 
uh, because it's based on the idea of global visibility. And that is so not okay, right? So you then have to develop really complex t uh, techniques for garbage collection to work properly. Like you have to defer all of these things to like known sequence points or things like this. Um, it's bad, right? Uh, and so I feel like we're still also in our infancy in terms of really understanding the proper memory models for multi-threaded programming. Um, and I'm not an expert on that either. Uh, so ask me again in 10 years. Can you show John Blow how to compile from Emacs with a keyboard shortcut? I, he Maybe he doesn't want to. I'm sure he knows he can. Can you go into a bit of detail about what these memory alloca allocators and management techniques are? Uh, it's a li not right now. I mean, we've talked a bit about them on stream, but... I have Bastion. You would never refactor code just for code readability um, no, definitely not. Uh, I mean, I try to keep my code readable at all times to the extent that you can. Um, but, but no, readability is not a valid reason to refactor code in my, in my opinion, because either if it was written incorrectly and is, should be written in a different way in the first place, uh, for readability, then you probably should have been able to have some other argument for why you were going to rewrite it, not just the reusability. I'm not just the readability. There should have been like, it's too hard to call or there's, I want different ways of calling it that I can use outside of it uh, differently or it's slow because it's written in a contorted way that could have been uh, improved by uh, reorganizing or something. But, uh, but just like an abstract uh, subjective opinion about how readable the code is, not a good reason, in my opinion. Uh, no, we are not uh, planning on having script support. Uh, oh, okay, Puss in Krampus is like Puss in Pussycat. So, Krampus, Krampus Lauf, Krampus Lauf, Krampus Lauf, Krampus Lauf, Krampus Lauf, Krampus Lauf. I just discovered dual quaternions. Are they used in game programming? I imagine someone probably used dual quaternions. I can't, sorry, I can't name anyone offhand who does, but probably someone does. Oh, could this be in shadow transform? So this right here, no. Um, no, I didn't do that. I could, I think you might be right, uh, but I don't know. That's a good question. I'll put a to-do in for you. <clears throat> what are your thoughts on ISPC for multi-threading SIMD? Is that the Intel's paralyzing compiler that they've got there? <clears throat> Are you talking about this thing? Well, let me see. Yeah. Um, my thoughts are it's good. <laughs> I don't have a lot of thoughts other than that. Um, one sad, sad thing I learned recently um, doing now hash was that dropping down to ASM actually gets you a massive performance win in a lot of cases still. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know what to say. Compilers are still bad. They just, they haven't gotten very good. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and shut down stream. We're getting a little over, we're getting a little over time here.
getting a little over time. Uh, all right, let's uh, wrap it up. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody, for joining me for an episode of Handmade Hero. It's been a pleasure coding with you, as always. If you want to follow along the series at home, you can always pre-order the game on handmadehero.org. It comes with a source code, so you can follow along every night uh, with what we're doing. Uh, I'll be back here tomorrow when we will uh, start to try and make a little skeletal transform code in that uh, entity stuff so that we can start to use those snap points uh, and have those work reliably for us. That's our, our big next to do. Uh, that's what we'll be doing tomorrow. Hope to see you back here for that. Until then, have fun programming, everyone, and I'll see you on the internet. Take it easy, everybody.